This is the Central Florida Computer Society's Special Interest Group, or WINSIG, for Sunday, April 11th, 2021. And we are including SEMCO, the Southeastern Michigan Computer Organization, as part of our meeting. We are combining the two meetings because they wanted me to do a presentation on Evernote. And so I said, well, it's at the same time as our meeting, so let's go ahead and combine them, and I'll do it for both groups. So the normal Windows special interest group schedule of events is going to be one item today, and that's going to be Evernote. Today's meeting is and presentation is about Evernote, and it's mostly about the basics of, inter, of, of Evernote for 2021, because there's been a lot of updates and a lot of changes since the last time I did this presentation, which is probably about two years ago. I've done it several times, and I've been using Evernote since 2008. A little bit about myself, for those of you who, are, who don't know me, uh, I am Huey, and that's with an E, H-E-W-I-E, -E, and not H-O-W, so it is Huey. And Huey.net is my website. I just redid it in the last uh, month or so. Uh, please take a look at it. But one of, the play one of the pages there is a YouTube page that shows the channel of my channel, the Ron Brown and Tech for Seniors channel, APCUG's channel, the CFCS channel, and the, uh, the Sarasota Technology User Group or STUG channel are all there. There's links to them. So you can always, if you can't figure out or can't remember where the links are to those channels on YouTube, you can get to them through Huey.net. This is the Windows SIG. I have uh, a portion of my website is on the Windows SIG. And what I do is I post the items prior to each meeting with the items I'm going to cover when they are after the meeting and after this meeting, the recording of this will go on that same page. So you don't have to go to YouTube. You can go to my website, click on it, and it will open up the YouTube recording. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, Ron Brown and I are the co-hosts of Tech for Seniors. We're with Bob G., Dewey Close, and Ray Baxter. And it is a weekly show for seniors about technology. We are going to have our 55th successive week of Tech for Seniors tomorrow. And it is every Monday at noon Eastern, 9 uh, Pacific time. And we're doing the overflow on YouTube live if you can't get in because we've filled up every week. But we're here to talk about Evernote. And what is Evernote? It's a note-taking application, very similar to Microsoft's OneNote. It is usable on all platforms, desktop, laptop, tablet, smartphone. It's both cloud-based and local. Installation is very easy. You go to evernote.com and you create an account a free account, and then you can download for each of your devices, Windows, Mac, iPhone, iPad, or iPad, iPod Touch, Android, Android Chromebook, uh, Evernote on the desktop virtual machines of Mac and Windows, and there's also a web version of Evernote. And by that, I mean you can get to it through your browser. Flexible organization. Evernote doesn't force you to organize in any certain way. You can create a system of notebooks or don't organize at all. Any note is a quick search away. It's available everywhere. You have an iPhone and a Windows computer, Android and a Mac, like using Linux. Unlike most note-taking apps, Evernote works on them all. Web Clipper. Some note-taking apps strictly limit what you can save online. Evernote's Web Clipper lets you save and annotate web pages, images, and PDFs. Character recognition. Find notes by searching for keywords, even if the word appears in photos. And I'm going to show you a photo 
uh, in our search as, as an example. Uh, whiteboard scans, business cards, handwriting, or documents. Web application. Many note-taking apps lack a fully functional web application. Evernote Web offers a complete lineup of features from any major web browser. App integrations. Evernote works with the apps you rely on, including Google Drive, Slack, Outlook, Microsoft Teams, Zapier, and Gmail. Now there's a new version of Evernote and it's for Mac and for Windows. It rebuilt the app from the ground up to make it easier for you to create notes quickly, customize them however you like and find information in an instant. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the differences in the versions in just a moment. Home on Evernote consists of widgets that display your content in a convenient and streamlined view. All customers have a notes widget, a scratch pad widget, and a recently captured widget. Evernote Premium and Evernote Business, and I'm going to explain the differences between these in, in a little bit. Uh, the customers have additional widget options, uh, as well as the ability to customize the appearance of their home. The editor in Evernote. You have more control over the appearance of your notes. Use semantic headers and tables to give structure to your notes or change fonts, colors, and highlights to add a personal touch. I don't do a lot of that. I just want to capture the information and save it. Checklists. You can indent items. You can drag and drop to reorder them. And you can enjoy the satisfaction of crossing them off with a single click. And you can add rich content like audio, photos, attachments, and sketches. And it's, that's quicker and easier with the new multi-function insert button. And they also have a redesigned formatting toolbar. And that's in the latest version. The search in Evernote. Save time and keystrokes. Get real-time search suggestions as you type to find what, you're, what you need faster. Filter your searches with a tag, an attachment, a PDF, URL, and more. You make searching your Evernote superpower. Combine keywords, tags, or locations to find exactly what you need. Then save those searches and use them over again with just one click. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the search and I'm going to demonstrate the search. The user interface of Evernote. In the latest version, the main screen has a cleaner, more modern look that's consistent across all your devices. It's easier on the eyes and easier for you to get stuff done. You can now change the default width of your notes. Choose optimized readability for a more focused view or fit to window for maximum information on screen. The foundation of Evernote, this update moves the app to a new code base that's more stable and reliable for fewer hangs or crashes and those kind of errors. The new code base means Evernote can fix bugs quicker and release new features more often and they are doing it quite often syncing data across different platforms and devices is smoother and more seamless than before. You ask about Linux. I know John Kennedy does. Wait for my next slide too, John. Don't get too excited. You can now install official Evernote client on Ubuntu and Debian-based Linux distributions from an article from March 3rd of this year, just last month. For years, the desktop client of Evernote was not available for Linux. Evernote promised a Linux application some time ago and its beta version was finally available for Ubuntu-based distributions. This is from an article that I've indicated at the bottom. However, I couldn't find a link to the Linux beta from the several articles that talked about it and had a link to it. 
What I did find is you can apply to test it by filling out a form at Evernote.com in their uh, uh, page called Early Access. And you can then apply to be a beta tester for the Linux. So apparently it hasn't been released. They opened it up and then apparently closed it. How is Evernote arranged or, or how is it, what does it consist of? Well, it consists of notebooks, which are folders, which contain notes. And notes are files which contain text, snapshots, audio recordings, attachments, whatever. And, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of talking. I'm going to do some showing here in a little bit. And that, so the Evernote hierarchy is a note, then notebook, and then you can stack the notebooks. Creating notes. You right click on other notebooks. Uh, uh, do I put everything in one notebook? Not really, you don't need to. You can, you can break it up, you can have it in pieces and parts and, uh, and one notebook maybe for each project and then have different notes under that notebook. Uh, one notebook for each type of note. And that might be another way that you want to do it. Uh, one notebook for each person or client. You can stack the notebooks. Simply drag one on top of another, and it creates a stack. So there's a lot of organization that you can do if you wish to do so. Creating notes. They have some templates when you create a new note. You can just create a new note and create a blank note. And when you create a blank note, it's going to look like this. And then when you click under the dots, the, I'm sorry, under more, you do have some uh, formatting of, of text. You can change uh, to a certain font. You can have the different size fonts. You can have a color of what the font is. You make it bold, you know, italic, underscored, or you can highlight. And then when you click more, you have a numbered list, a checklist, insert link, uh, align alignments, indents, strike through. So there's a lot of editing you can do from a blank note by just pasting some data uh, from a Word document, from, from anything you want, or just type it in, start typing. Notice the two at the bottom are grayed out. Well, they're grayed out because you're th there's nothing formatted there. If you then, whoops, uh, I'll show you later uh, a little bit more about that. Another way if you want to uh, create a new note is use the template for a meeting note. And this is what the, the template looks like. And you can change it any way you want. And you can create your own templates. You can make changes to this one and then save it as a template that you're going to use. But you can save it as a meeting note. I mean, you can make a to-do list. And when you check it off, it crosses it out. You can rearrange these. A weekly planner. A project planner, and that does go five weeks out. Uh, I didn't capture the, the whole thing. But, uh, and then under the legends is not started on track, at risk, blocked, or delayed, and the final is completed. And that's not showing on this particular picture. Lecture notes, if you're going to meetings or you're in classes, you wanna have lecture notes, you can just pop up the template for a lecture note and start filling in. Create your own, make some changes and use it for your, uh, for your uh, meeting notes for your minutes for meetings and so on. An essay outline, again, they have a template for it. A meal planner and a daily reflection. So those are just some of the templates they have available within Evernote to create a new note. Now you can add tags to any note. Uh, the tags are, there's over a hundred, or there is a hundred thousand per account allowed. I don't use tags. The search, and I'm going to show you again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to show you the search. It's so good. I don't even use the tags. 
Uh, it takes time to add them each time. And I have a lot of notes and I'll talk about that and mention it in just a bit. So notes can have multiple tags. If, if tags are, you're comfortable with tags, you can then put various tags on different articles and be able to search by a particular tag. And uh, a note can exist in multiple containers because you can have, again, more than one tag. Tags can be nested into multiple hierarchies. This permits you to create your own structure. Devices, here's from my Evernote. And when I look at my account, under devices, you'll see at the top, well, let's make it a little bit closer. You'll see at the top is my desktop. Underneath that is my phone, my Android phone. And then underneath that is my Chromebook. And then underneath that is my iPad. Those I use extensively. Then there's Evernote for Windows on my Surface, which I haven't probably booted in a month or two, and that's why it's not showing here. Uh, the Evernote for Windows on my Nuck Nuck, I have uh, uh, actually wiped that machine and sold it. So that's gone, and I probably need to revoke the access. And then the bottom two are from my older Chromebook, which is now Robin's, and I don't believe I have Evernote on there. She doesn't use it. And uh, so I probably ought to revoke those as well. But you can see all of the devices that I use, my Evernote is right here. And, and you can see how recently I've accessed any of them. How secure is Evernote? Uh, how Evernote stores your data. Cloud-based storage services like Evernote don't exist in some sort of mystical cloud place but instead on a remote computer and accessible to anyone who obtains the username and password. The more accessible the data is to you, the more accessible it is to would-be attackers. So using your username, make sure your password is a long, good, secure password and not one you use on anything else. Because the, the if there is going to be any kind of a breach on your Evernote, it's going to be because somebody has your password. And so you want to make sure you make it so they can't and you don't give it out, you don't use it somewhere else and so on. Offshored cloud-based storage is a convenience, but recognize that the convenience does carry risk and it is probably not the best storage choice for sensitive information. That was from an article from Livewire. From Evernote, Evernote users trust us with billions of their notes, projects, and ideas. That trust is based upon us keeping that data both private and secure. The information on this page is intended to provide transparency about how we protect that data. We will continue to expand and update this information as we add new security capabilities and make security improvements to our products. Again, that's from Evernote's security page. To continue from that page, Evernote uses industry standard encryption to protect your data in transit. This is commonly referred to as transport layer security or TLS or secure socket layer SSL technology. In addition, we support HTTP strict transport security or HSTS for Evernote service at evernote.com. We support a mix of Cypher suites and TLS protocols to provide a balance of strong encryption for browsers and clients that support it and a backward compatibility for legacy clients that need it. We plan to continue improving our transport security posture to support our commitment to protecting your data. And again, that's from Evernote's security page. Now there's two versions of Evernote for Windows. There is the version 6 and the version 10. Version 10 is the latest version. But I do want to mention, uh, before I go to that, I do want to mention that if you have version 6 and you get pestered about upgrading, you can upgrade without getting rid of the older version. I maintain version 6 and version 10 on my home 
desktop computer. So you're going to have both exist. My concern was when I was going to upgrade to version 10 is if I, if I add a note in version 10, is that going to be readable and acceptable by version six? And the answer to that was yes, with no problem at all. So as soon as I up the, as soon as I add a note to version 10, it's available in version six, as well as on all of my other devices. So there's no problem. So sometimes I bring up six, sometimes I bring up 10, sometimes I bring up both if I'm comparing some things or doing some things. So it doesn't matter, I have them both on my taskbar on my Windows machine. So if you're running six and you've got room on your computer, don't be afraid to update. And it didn't take any extra, it uses the same database. So it doesn't take up more space for the data on your hard drive uh, when you have both versions. Now the Windows 6 version 6 looks like this. I'm gonna go ahead and close out the little about and it'll look like this. Now what I, uh, let's see, I'm not sure, let's see, yeah. Okay, and then version 10 looks like this. And again, taking that out, there's not a lot of difference, but Windows 10 is a lot cleaner. And I'm going to point out, I'm going to go through some of the pieces and parts of each of those versions. So you have an understanding of, of what they are and what differences there are. This is what it looks like on my iPad. Not much difference, except on the left, because there's, there's less space on the screen, they've got it uh, just icons to the information in my uh, home screen. Uh, part of the note, uh, the, the Evernote uh, screen. This is on my Android phone. Again, same articles, same way of posting. And if I add it in my Windows, it, it, my Evernote 10, it will automatically update it on my Android phone when I open up the Android phone. This is what it looks like on my Chromebook. And here's the web version. So you'll notice that they're all very similar, all have the same articles. And so going from one to the other, it doesn't matter if I add it on the web version, it will add it to all of the other versions if I add it. So they all sync. Okay, here is the desktop screen for version six. This is an older screen capture, so the articles aren't the same articles. I apologize for that. You'll notice on the left where the notebooks are outlined. So you'll see, and, I, and I'll show you on the next slide, uh, a close up of that. You'll see little numbers in parentheses. That's the number of notes that are in that notebook. And then on the right, you'll see where it says Huey's notebook. That's the name of the notebook that, uh, the note that it, I'm sorry, the notebook that it uh, is in. And then the word says cordcutternews.com. That's where I got the article from. And so when I did a screen, when I did a capture using Web Clipper, it also picked up the link. So I can click on that and it'll take me to the actual article that I got this from. And then it also gives a date and time when I picked it up. And then underneath, I can then go in and I can actually edit my note. So I can uh, delete some things that, are, that were picked up when I captured it, but have nothing to do with the article. So I can take some of those items out or I can actually add some notes as well. Again, here's what the notes look like with the numbers in parentheses. Those numbers, again, refer to the number of notes that are in that notebook. And here's some more of version six. So you'll see a little bit larger where I have a lot of different uh, notebooks. And then over on the, uh, on the right where it says share, you can share the note, you can copy the URL, uh, you can post it to Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Or, or you can send a copy to somebody. Now the share changes 
in version 10, and I'm going to show you what it does as well. And the more, uh, the, the three dots at the top, uh, you can have a reminder, you can save as a template, you can present. The present was something that I really liked and used a lot, especially for the Windows SIG, but it's no longer in version 10. So sometimes when I'm doing, if I'm going to use Evernote to uh, demonstrate some of the articles that I'm going to cover for this meeting, what I do is I will use version six instead of 10 and use the present portion of it. Hopefully they're going to add it to version 10 later on. You can print a note, you can email it to somebody and you can delete it. The newer version you don't delete, you move it to trash. Here is the version 10 uh, screen on the desktop. I made the, uh, uh, the home part of it to the, I put, put it, enlarged it and put it on the right, but that is the left side of the screen capture. And you'll see it's very similar. It doesn't show the number of items in each of the notebooks. Uh, it's much cleaner and the search is right there and you can add a new note right there. It's much easier to work with. And then you can have shortcuts showing and you can have recent notes if you wish as well. Now in version 10, you'll see in the top right in the corner, you can share or more actions. And then when we click on more actions, what we get are you can share, you can move, copy to. And by copy to or move, that means to another notebook. So if, if I want to change, a lot of times I'll add, quickly add an article and I just, whatever the default comes up is the notebook that it puts it in, I'll go ahead and change it to the proper one later. But again, I don't do it too religiously because the search takes care of that. I don't have to worry about it. But there are some times that I do want them in a particular uh, notebook. You can duplicate them. You can edit the tags, add and, and edit what's there. You can add to shortcuts. You can pin to home. Uh, you can copy an internal link. You can save as a template. You can find within the note. So you can look for something within that note. Uh, you can change the note width. You can look at the note info, and that's where the article came from or some other information about it. You can export it and you can print it or you can move it to trash. It doesn't, which is delete. You hit the delete key, it moves it to trash in version 10. It doesn't delete it. So you can then look at the trash and get it back if you do it by mistake. If you want to share, when you click on share in version 10, it's a little bit different than it is in version six. And you can share, okay, here's the article that was from a consumer report. It, I can make it a shareable link. And if I do, it, it gives me a link that I can then give to you so you can actually see the article in my Evernote database. And I can invite you, somebody uh, either by email or by name. Uh, and I guess the name is going to pick up from my uh, a list of names. And I can email a copy of it to someone as well. And when I share it with you, I can specify whether you can edit and, in, and invite other people or whether you can edit it or you can just view it. The more, remember I showed you this earlier and the two uh, at the bottom were grayed out and they are here. But if I highlight an area and it doesn't show the highlight in in this next one, but I did highlight an area off screen. And as soon as I highlighted, then I could then simplify the formatting or remove the formatting for that particular area. Now the search is the most fantastic part of what I like about Evernote. You just type your search into the box and it has fantastic results. Using search. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can just use a keyword, just put, an, put a word in there and search. You can put, uh, if you want all of the words or you want any of the words, you can put the word any and then put the, the words after that. So you can do any colon invoice expense. And if it finds the word invoice or if it finds the word expense, 
uh, it'll find it. If you want all of them, then just put the two words without uh, without an operator. Okay, let me show you a live search. Well, when I say live search, I recorded a live search. So it's not really live, but it is a recording of a live search. I want to show you the power of the Evernote search. And the only way to do that is real time so you get an idea how fast and how complete this is. is that what I want you to note is the fact that there are 16,835 notes in my Evernotes. And I am going to do a search for the word mayor. All I do is type in the word mayor and press enter. From the 16,000 plus, it narrowed it down to 54 notes that quick. We're going to come down to the first one that I want to demonstrate right here. This is a PDF that was saved from a website that we want to make it full screen and we come up and hit this, expand it. Notice that it honed in right down here in yellow and you should be able to see this and I'll zoom in on it. The word mayor. I'm going to show you a clip of this enlarged so you can see how poorly the quality of the PDF is and the fact that still found it. We want to look now at the our next example. Here is the photograph that I'm talking about. And you'll notice in yellow, just highlight it is here is the word mayor is there twice. And I found it within a JPEG. The third example I want to show you is an example of handwriting. I'll click it. And you'll see here, this is what it looks like. And it did highlight it and it found the word mayor. You'll see it didn't pick up the word mayor here, but my M, this is my handwriting, by the way. Uh, the M here is not very well formatted, so it didn't pick it up, but it did pick it up in the next sentence by handwriting in a search. Understand that's important. And notice how fast it was in finding all of these examples. Now, that was real time, but it was a recording of real time. But no, remember how quickly that was when I clicked the word, as soon as I hit the word mayor, and when I hit enter, it was with a less than probably two seconds, it had the 54 results. And it searched 16,000, almost 17,000 notes in that time and found even words in pictures and handwriting. That is a search engine. And that's one of the main things that I really like about Evernote. I can find anything very quickly just by doing a quick search like that. So let's kind of hone in now. Here's a, that same article. And let's, we did a search for it. And there it is. Notice the quality of the PDF or the lack of quality, how grainy it is. And it still found the word in that PDF, in that full page PDF at that. And in the picture, it found the two words. If you search for, uh, for words on your computer, you're not going to find one that's within a picture. Evernote is able to do that. And even handwriting, it will pick up words as well. Not perfect, but it's pretty good. What about sharing? You can share a notebook with other users by right-clicking the notebook you would like to share and then clicking share notebook. This is in version six now. Click share public link to share your notebook publicly or share with individuals or with invitees only. This is the way it looks in version six. Uh, in Web Clipper, this is an add-on or an extension to Edge, Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. Evernote Web Clipper. 
when you click the little elephant at the top, you'll get a pop-up on the screen of the website that you're at, and you can save it depending upon what you're looking at and depending upon what you're, what's on the screen, it, you'll get some different choices to clip. And let's look at a couple of them. Here is a full web page, big web page from uh, G Post. And as you can see, it's a fairly large article. And you can see the top of it. And when I did Clipper to it, I had a choice of either the article, which it puts a, a block around the whole article all the way down the page. And I can also say, okay, the simplified article, and that cuts out all the junk. Any ads within the article, any menu items, so take a look at our other article uh, about the same thing and so on. Sometimes you may see the word save or you may see the word advertisement, but you don't see the ad in it. It simplifies it. You can do a full page and grab all the menus you want and have the whole page. Depend but again, what you're looking to save, what information you want in your Evernote. You, you don't need all these menus from a web page, so you can eliminate them. But if you want them, they're there. You can also just put a bookmark. And this is what the bookmark looks like it puts the actual link to the article that you were collecting in Evernote and usually a, a, a sentence or two from the beginning of the article and the name of the article. And then you can just click on the link and it'll take you to the article. So you don't have to, you don't have to keep the whole article if you don't want. And if you highlight an area, you can then, when you click on the clipper, one of the choices is the selection. So you can just select a certain area of a web page and save it as your note. Now you can organize your notebooks and you can you give them each, an, uh, 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 I'm sorry, you can organize your notes uh, as notebooks and you can give them names and you can decide which one is going to uh, contain that particular note. So again, the web clipper looks like this. You can encrypt a note. You've got some data that you don't want anyone to be able to see. Here's how to encrypt it. You open the note and highlight the text you want to encrypt. You right click or control click the highlighted text and select encrypt selected text. Enter a paraphrase into the form. Once you've set the paraphrase and confirm, the text will be encrypted. And it's going to look uh, like this. You right mouse click and you'll get the encrypt selected text. And this is the form that you get. Warning, Evernote does not store a copy of your encryption paraphrase or passphrase. If you forget this passphrase, Evernote cannot recover your encrypted content. It's gone forever. You can't get to it. That's how secure it is. So you choose a paraphrase or passphrase, and they are ca case sensitive. You re-enter it to make sure that you've typed it correctly. And you can even put a hint in to help you remember that passphrase. And you can remember passphrase until I quit Evernote. But once you quit Evernote and come back, it, you're going to have to type it in again. And then once you've filled all that in, the encrypt becomes a live button. Once you click that, your data is encrypted. Evernote plays well with others. This happens to be from Outlook. Uh, I understand the Outlook Connection in Windows, I'm sorry, in Evernote version 10 uh, may not be working, but they intend it to eventually. Evernote email. When you get an Evernote account, you get an email address. And I believe it may only be now in the premium version 
Uh, but I can take anything I want, put it in an email, use the email address that I have for Evernote, send it, and it automatically inserts it as a note in Evernote. So no matter where you are or what you're doing, if you remember your email address for Evernote, you can send something and make a note out of it. Now, what you don't want to do is post that email anywhere or give it to people because every time they send something to that, it gets posted to your Evernote. So you want to keep it close to the vest uh, and use it only by for yourself. And but you can add any of those items to your Evernote very easily just by sending it as an email. Okay, pricing, how much does this all cost? Well, there's a basic or free version and there's a premium version. I would suggest if you aren't using it, that you start with the basic, the free version. Try it, play with it, do it is for as long as you want. There are some limitations. You can sync up to two devices with the free version. You can find notes fast and search and tags. You can apply rich formatting to your notes. You can clip web pages. There is a minimum of a maximum of 25 megabytes for, per note size. And there's a maximum of 60 megabytes per month upload limit. It's not very much. But a lot of what you're going to uh, post or, or save in Evernote to begin with are going to be web pages and so on. And so you, you're going to want to use the uh, simplified rather than the full article. And so you can cut out a lot of the photographs and so on. And you can keep that limit down to test it. The premium gives you some extra, but the, uh, the two important points there, and I am going to compare them just in a, in a bit, uh, but it's 200 megabytes maximum note size for the premium and 10 gigabytes a month for the upload limit. I have never reached either one of those. I have a premium account. I pay by the year and by the year, instead of $7.99 a month, it's $69.99 a year or $70 a year. I have been a premium member, I, own, I think from maybe the first year or maybe the second year that I used it and uh, and that was in 2008, and I still use it. Okay, so when you capture and customize uh, both the, the basic and premium, these are these are items that doesn't matter whether you have a basic account or a premium account, you get scanned, you can scan handwritten notes, whiteboards, receipts, and more. You can clip, organize, and share web pages with Web Clipper. You can attach photos, PDFs, spreadsheets, Google Docs, and other files to your notes. You can use a variety of fonts, highlight colors, and formatting tools. Again, both basic and premium accounts can do all of these. You can record audio notes. You can create to-do lists with checkboxes in any note. You can annotate images. You can apply templates to your notes from a wide variety of options. In the premium only, you can also annotate PDFs, create and save your own custom templates, scan and digitize business cards to create a personal database of contacts, forward emails directly into your Evernote account so that forwarding emails is only in the premium version. How about being more productive? In both basic and premium versions, in other words, free or the $8 a month, you can add reminders to your notes, create your own filing system with notebooks and keyword tags, Find any note using search filters and get suggestions as you type. Connect Slack and Microsoft Teams to save conversations and track decisions. Connect your Gmail account to save important emails in Evernote. And search for text inside images and handwritten notes. 
All that's available in both the basic and premium. Now in premium only, you can also customize home to fit the way you work, connect your Outlook account to Evernote, search for text inside Office Docs and PDFs, see a version history of your notes and restore notes to older versions, email and chat support. You do not get email and chat support in, with the free version. That does my uh, presentation. If there aren't a lot of questions, I'll do a little show and tell and get into uh, uh, my Evernote because I know we do have quite a bit of time left, but uh, I, I, I am anticipating a few questions first. Yeah, uh, there's quite a few questions in the chat box. Can you see okay. that or should we read them? Uh, out? It, yeah, why don't you read them out? Let me go ahead and I'm going to stop the share right now. Okay, so um, uh, there's a lot of uh, comments. Uh, let me just start off with Brian Brodsky, who mentions the beta version of Evernote is available in the AUR for Arch Linux. That's uh, uh, one um, uh, Linux uh, distro, uh, Arch Linux up there, and it apparently is available there, the Evernote. Okay, John Kennedy, make note of that. Because I know you were you were interested in that. Okay, so uh, that was the note from Brian Brodsky, and then uh, Marcia says Evernote is awesome. Rich Fink, uh, Rick Fink says, can you migrate from Evernote version six to ten? Uh, I assume he's talking about Evernote version six and Evernote version ten. Uh, Rick, there, is that what you meant? Yeah. Oh, go ahead and answer that first, and then I'll answer the question. Okay, I'll just answer the question. When you go from version six to version 10, it's not really a migration, it's an addition, and the data is the same, it's there. So you just install version 10, you can uninstall version six if you wish, or you can leave both of them on your computer. Uh, the data does not, uh, is not affected in any way, and uh, uh, and I don't. So it's there's not a lot of uh, what's the word I want to say. There's not a lot of differences in uh, that need to be updated. It's just going to be a different way in doing them, and the back end, uh, the whole code base is different. So it sounds like uh, version six and version ten are just different clients, but they access the same database. That's correct. Okay. Uh, uh, then there's a similar question from Jack Baum. If there is good compatibility amongst version six and 10, why would you even hold on to version six? I'm only doing it so I can do demonstrations and, and talks like this. Other than okay. that, I don't, I, I don't need to. And I probably wouldn't. And I don't have both on any of my other machines. I just have whatever they installed and whatever they run. So I would imagine, uh, I would imagine on my Chromebook, I'm, there's only one version available. And same with the uh, with the other devices. It's probably going to be ten. I thought you said that there was a few features that had not been ported to ten yet and six when you were doing the presentation. Yeah, there, there are, and if those are important to you, that would be a reason to have both or not to update. So uh, I guess that uh, also answered uh, 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 Norbert Gotchika's question, is there a reason to have both version six? You answered one of them, so you could demo both versions. But uh, if there's a feature that you want and it's not there, you can stay with six. But 10 sounds like, you know, it might have uh, better features or a different approach. So, uh, but I, I'm glad that there is a, a, a flexibility variety and you don't lose your data. So that's good. Uh, and then uh, while you're doing your first uh, video demo or your recorded video, there was no audio, but you answered that already. Um, then Ken Larrabee asks, I wonder if you can search the search results. 
I don't know if there's a way to do that. Okay. Maybe um, if the search results can be captured in a different document and then you can do a search on that. Maybe sounds, that uh, might be one way. I'm not sure. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if it's in a particular, there is a way to uh, search a particular article or, or note, but not, uh, not a group, I don't believe. Once you've narrowed it down, you might want to narrow it down with different keywords, and that might do it. Okay. Well, interesting question. Um, then Mike Ungerman asks, uh, I'm going in the order uh, that these were posted. If one scans handwriting into Evernote, is there a capability to convert to digital text? Not within, uh, not within Evernote that I'm aware of, but there are programs out there that do that now. I have not, I yeah, don't use yeah, them, but. Yeah. Uh, I, I imagine I something like an OCR, uh, you know, a utility that will scan handwritten stuff and convert to uh, text. And then you could put that into Evernote. One quick way to really do it is if it's a short article and it's handwritten, uh, just just do a text, I'm sorry, speech to text. And there's a lot of ways you can do that built right into Windows and, and several of the other operating systems where you just read it into the into a, a, a Word doc or a, a Google doc. Uh, you just read it into it and it will convert it to uh, uh, a digital format. And then you could also even save the audio as well. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, good questions so far. Uh, and then Michael Leach asks, uh, on, uh, that, that, that's not a question. He was just having some audio issues. Can um, Martha asks, can you start with Microsoft and go to Linux? I imagine if you have uh, Evernote and you started on a Microsoft platform, and then if you go to Linux, can you take all your Evernote with you? Yeah, once you, once you, open, once you open your account, uh, it saves the data in the cloud as well as uh, if you're on a PC or a Mac, I believe it saves it locally as well, but it saves it in the cloud. So if you go to a different uh, platform, that data is still there. So you, if you'll remember, I showed a screen capture of my iPad, my, I, my uh, I don't have it on my iPhone, but on my Android phone and on my Chromebook, it was all the same data. It was sort of the same database. All I did was open up uh, Evernote and it was there. And so I just did a screen capture of it and it was this, and they were the same articles. Okay. So nice. it's all, all your data is there. So if you go to a different platform, your data will still be there. Or if you just open up the browser version and go on web, on the web, it's all there as well. Okay, nice. Uh, then Marcia um, uh, comments, for me, Evernote is only as good as how much you use it. If you don't save anything to it, you won't see its value. I appreciate the premium membership and use it a lot like Huey does. Something new to me is to share from Google Photos to Evernote, and you can even choose the notebook to put it into. So that's good. Um, Marta uh, further asks, uh, what length audio can you record into Evernote? I am not sure what the limits are for it. Uh, well, at least in the free, it's whatever, 256 yeah. megabyte. So th that's a pretty big yeah, audio yeah. file. Yeah. Yeah, I was just, yeah, I was just gonna say that's a big audio file. Yeah, I, I, I have a suspicion that these Evernote people, they went and measured how long a senator is talking and then uh, uh, <laughs> measured it and it came to 250 megabytes. So they came up with 256. <laughs> yep. Um, okay, so uh, that was my political uh, uh, joke uh, on that. And then Stephen <laughs> Hall asks, does OneNote have any feature or advantage that Evernote does not have? I'm going to have to defer that to anybody here in the audience because I don't, I have never used OneNote. I started with Evernote uh, long before OneNote was, was even a viable product. It was out there, but it just, 
it wasn't free. It was part of Office. And I just started using Evernote. And uh, I got so involved with Evernote that uh, and got so many notes in it that I never considered yeah. changing. So I've not looked into it. I, I suspect from the name itself, uh, the Microsoft can only do one note at a time and ever can do everything note at a time. <laughs> you know, this is not quite that uh, simple. Uh, uh, one note is, I understand getting better. I understand their search is, is a little bit better than it was, but I don't think it matches the search. If, you'll, if you remember when I did the search in the recording, it was within two seconds searched all 16,800 and, uh, notes and found 54 of them. I didn't, I probably sh should have said, now watch how long this takes. And I didn't say that. And mm. by the time I finished the sentence saying that when you hit enter, it, they were all there. And mm. that was, that was actually the time it took to find them. Excellent. Uh, the next question is from Thomas McAndrew. How do you change the title to a notebook? Uh, it's very simple. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Make sure sure sound is on. And uh, we'll minimize this. I'm going to open up. See, I have both my, I don't know if you can see my taskbar or not, but I have my two Evernotes. There's this one's Evernote 6 and this is Evernote 10. I'll open up Evernote 10. There it is. If I wanted to change one of the notebook names, I believe all I have to do is, let's see, let's Evernote event. I think, let's see, there was a way in which you could do it. You know, I don't know, in the, I think in version six, I could just write, let's try clicking it and see what happens. No, I am not sure, but I know you can do it. Uh, maybe if you go up to uh, the right, not, not the uh, left column, at the top right there, and maybe the three dots or something. <coughs> sure, if no you right-click on it, rename, you can change rename, it. Rename, rename notebook. There it is right there. Yeah. Yep. Or function a, a key F2. So if I do this and just say Evernote, say continue, it's now changed it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Man, those three little dots are important all over the place. Oh, absolutely. They're here and they're there. And I'm going to change and I, my uh, 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 computer handle to three dots here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other thing is, is when it shows a, a link here, well, let's find a different, uh, different one here. Let's down here. These were Evernote ones. Oh, let's see. Oh, that's because we're looking at Evernote. I just go to notebooks. Ah, go to home. So you can see that different things happen here. But if I come up here to the top, there we go. And just go to notes. And this article came from this. So if I just click this, say visit source, bingo, it takes me right to the article. Now, this was the article itself. And if you look at the note, and I will expand it by clicking here, I made it a simplified note. So it just cut out all the junk and that's it. And let me show you how I use this. I am going to open up my browser, which is open here. And I'm gonna open up a new tab I'm going to use something I call uh, that's called Feedly, which is an RSS reader, but it takes me to all of the, this is how I keep up with the news and so on. But let's go ahead and just look at one of the places I like to go to is, is beta news. So let's go there. And then here is an article. Linux could run on Apple M1 chips in a few months. If I click on that, it gives me part of the article and then I can go visit the website. Because I have the paid version of Evernote and I have the paid version of Feedly, I'm able to click on Save to Evernote right here. 
I tell it, okay, which one do I want? Let's see, Linux. I don't know if I've got something here. So we're just going to call this hardware. Click here. Bingo, it turned green. Now if I go back to my Evernote, And uh, let's just look at the notes. Come on, don't fail me now. <clears throat> okay. The syncing is a little bit different in 10, so I'm going to just quickly close this and then open it again, just so you see. And there it is. It's right there was that quick and here's the article in my Evernote because it was a simplified article that I took so it, it cut out all the junk so that's uh, that's one way I could do it the other way that I do it is I visit the website and notice here I've got all of this <clears throat> menuing and so on and when I click let's see let's full screen this and make it bigger. Okay. And if I come up here to my Evernote button and click here, it opens the clipper and I can have this the simplified article. I can show the article and does a green box around the article. I can do the full page where it shows all of the menus and so on. I can make a bookmark out of it. You see how quick it is to do this, or I can do a screenshot of it and I'll cancel it. And I will come back and I've already saved it. So I can just get out of it. And I'm back to the article again. So it shows me what I'm going to get and what it's going to put in the article. And that's and, and this is how I quickly go through all of my news. I just go down this and I see, oh, okay, this is another article. Oh, Microsoft kills off its translator app. All right, I just go ahead and say, okay, add this. And we're going to put this into the Windows SIG information, put it there, turned it green, and it's now part of my, and I go to the next article. And then I can go back and look at it. That's how I use <laughs> Evernote all the time. Cool. That was a nice, cool demo. Uh, let's go down. We seem to have more questions popping up. Uh, so JJ Johnson asks, is the Evernote capture feature part of Evernote or is it an additional download? The web clipper is uh, an add-on or an extension to your browser. So depending okay. upon the browser. Okay. It, so, so it is separate, but it you have to sign in to the extension to your uh, Evernote uh, account and then it works every time you just click it and it, 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 work, it works okay. and puts it right into your Evernote. Okay. Uh, Bob Klein asks, can you avoid having your data going to the cloud, i.e. just have the data only on your computer? I am not sure if that's a choice, but the, the, the important part about it is, is that's where, <laughs> if, if you have more, especially if you have more than one device, you've got to have a way to sync it and that's where it gets synced. And Bob Klein, nice to see you on here. Uh, Bob uh, and I go back many years back to APCUG uh, meetings at Comdex. So I've known Bob for many years, not seen him in many years, but nice to see you on here. And then the next question is from Renee. Will Evernote run without the cloud, without using the cloud? Well, that's kind of the same question. And I don't know. I don't know the answer. You don't have to be connected or do you have to be connected? I, yeah, I, I on my PC, I know it. It's stored on my PC, and I don't think if I lost connection to the cloud, I could still get to what's there. But I'm not going to be able to sync. It's not going to be able to. It won't save anything new. I don't believe, or it may save it locally, and then has to go to the cloud to actually put it in my Evernote, so okay. I can pick it up on the other devices. I think I might be able to add something on that. And that is that I believe they're moving towards storing everything in the cloud. And uh, the stuff in the cloud is encrypted, so it is secure. Um, 
but some people are worried that the encryption could get broken by a hacker or something. But no, I, I think it's very dependent on the cloud. And so if you don't want to use the cloud, you don't want to use it, use Evernote. But I have no worry. The amount of encryption they have is very good. Yeah, I've not been concerned about it. You can, as I showed you, you can encrypt certain articles or certain portions of articles uh, in your own encryption and, and no one can get to it but you. But having it in the cloud, I do, uh, although they warn you, you probably shouldn't uh, because it's out in the cloud and could get compromised somewhere along the way. But I do have copies of my driver's license, my car registration, and I have them in a... Uh, notebook uh, that I call cops. So I get stopped by the police and I'm, I'm fumbling for my insurance card. I'm sh fumbling for my license and, and shaking all the time because you get nervous when a cop stops you. At least I do. Uh, all I got to do is I, I just take my phone and I say, okay, open up Evernote, go to cops and bingo. There, there's everything. If I can't find it in my glove box or in my wallet, here's a copy of the information. I also have uh, a prescription list that I always update and I update it and then put it in my Evernote. So if I go to a doctor's office and they say, uh, and I don't expect them to ask me and they say, well, what, I need a list of all your prescriptions. Here it is. You want me to email it to you? I can. You want, uh, you want to look at it and, and copy it down? You can as well. So I keep, I keep a, a lot of personal information in there, all my prescriptions, a copy of all my prescriptions, not the prescription, but the thing that I get from the, from the, from the drugstore that describes that particular medicine and uh, information about uh, the pill and so on. So I can, uh, all that, I don't have to file it somewhere. I don't have to find a piece of paper somewhere. It's in Evernote. Uh, and then Martha asks, can you show us an example of finding an audio file? I would if I had one on there. I don't think I have one. Okay, uh, uh, but if you could, uh, if it could search an image file that you've put there. Um, yeah, well, I, yeah. The, then well, we did, audio it, should it, be similar. Yeah, yeah. It, it, but it's going to have the little bar and the the start button, and you play it. I don't know whether it, it's going to pick up words within it, but it will know that you have an audio and whatever your description of that audio is. Right. Uh, and then uh, Dick uh, Vogel asked, is there an Evernote extension for the Brave browser? Um, I don't know. I would just go to Brave, open up Brave, and and uh, let's see. I, I'm not sure how you uh, share screen, share Brave. Yeah, there it is right there. I already installed it on there. Okay, that asks uh, answers his question. Uh, Rick, Rick wants to let everyone know, be wary of cloud bursts. Uh, I, I must be referring to the weather. Uh, you've been with us so far, so it hasn't affected your uh, connectivity. So uh, I don't see any more questions here. Okay, we still have... Uh... A few more minutes before we get ready, because I, I, unless you want to start a little bit early, I don't know. Do you have people that would come in right at three o'clock, or are they pretty much on here? Or is it going to be? No, uh, well, we can wait till three, four hour session, uh, the next session. But uh, I, I think this was a, a great presentation. Now we can see why Richard was so uh, gung ho about Evernote. Uh, clearly, uh, uh, a very productive tool. No doubt. Uh, I live. I live by it. It's, it's just so easy for me to find anything and store anything. Before before I used Evernote, I would have a folder, and I wouldn't know where which folder to look in on my computer, or which computer I had it on, or if I changed computers, did I back it up to the new computer, or is it out in the cloud, or one of the stores, or did I just lose it? With well, this way, everything is there on any device at any time. So I can carry my phone around with me and I have in my phone 16,000 notes available. So anything I want to uh, uh, save and have with me, I have available even on my phone. We, Good. we have Good. Uh, some other questions if you're willing to take some audio questions. Sure. 
Okay, so um, can you search your computer or other devices outside of the Evernote docs or files? Um, like say search within Evernote, search my hard drive for something that I might want to put into an Evernote? No, uh, Evernote only searches amongst itself, but I am going to, sh I'll show you a tool to use that's free. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, I'll share my screen once again. And I use a program, I'll minimize this. I use a program called Everything. I'll bring it up and I'll, I'll show you in the help here about everything. And this is where, and I'll put this in the chat box. Let's see, can I just, uh, I guess I got to click on it. Hang on, let me just grab this, control C. And uh, I'll throw it in the chat box, everyone. Okay, it's in the chat box. So you can see it. So this is everything, is, is a program called everything. And my entire computer is on here. And you say, well, does it take a long time? Every time I start my computer up, this is instantly available. So let's say I wanted to find, uh, what do I have on Semco? Bingo, I just typed in Semco and here are all the things that I have on my computer. And it's on any of my drives, anything that's connected, including my OneDrive, uh, because that's connected here. Uh, CF, CS, bingo, everything CF. There's going to be a lot of stuff because I've been a member of CFCS for a long. I will, you can see as I scroll down here really quickly, you can see, and it shows me where all this information is. So here's a, a board of directors meeting from 2000 and uh, let's see, to, uh, What's the date of that? 2010. Uh, here's a, a meeting from uh, also, let's see, 2012, 10, 01. So that would have been 2001. So I, I, it goes back as far as I have anything on my computer and anything is connected to my computer that I have listed in here. I love this program because you see how fast this search is. It's, just, it's even faster than Evernote's. And, and anything that I want, if I want, okay, I've got a logo out there and you can see it popped up because I've, I'm sorting by date right now, but if I sorted by name or I sorted by the path, it puts everything together. And then I can find something, let's say, uh, let's come down here and just find a, a particular article or your picture. Okay, here's one. I have no idea what this is, but I can right mouse click. And let's see, do I, that's not what I want to yeah, do. Great. Uh, and then when you find something, can you then drag it into Evernote and edit it in Evernote? No, what you can do though, is you can open it and then save it to Evernote, uh, copy it or uh, open up Evernote and, 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 and add it to an Evernote because you know where it is, because this tells you where it is as well. If you sort by or refresh, but there is a way here is, uh, yeah, open path. When I open the path, it takes me to the folder where that is. So, so if, then I, if, if you're limited in the free version to a certain file size, can you then um, use the Evernote as a utility and then save those files to your hard drive for the sake of storage and then delete it from your Evernote cloud account? Well, it's not going to say if it's larger than uh, than the size, it won't save it. It won't let you save it. No, you're, you're limited mean, to the size size of the uh, uh, document or the item by megabyte, or there's a, a total me number of megabytes per month. Yeah, if, if I, I'm not sure if they add what you've done if you delete it. Uh, does does that subtract it, and can you add more to it? That I don't know. That would be. I'm, guess, I, I'm guessing that if you add it and then take it out, it's still part of the number that you've used. Oh, yeah. so then it's it's no longer a utility as such, but it's an app of limited size. Yeah, but 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 I think if you use the free version and find it 
useful enough, then I would suggest you, yeah. you go ahead and, and, and do the other or try OneNote. One <laughs> free. The free version gives you enough space. Uh, I have the pay version, but the free version gives you a lot of space. So I wouldn't get too worried about running out of space on the free version unless you get to be as big as use is Howie, I think you're going to be okay. Yeah, uh, Richard, um, I just wanted to remind everyone to uh, pay attention. Other folks uh, who raised their hand, um, uh, they'd like a chance to chime in. I think, uh, uh, Bobji, uh, you had your hand raised. Uh, did you want to say something? It's a desktop version of Evernote. Uh, what about the desktop version? There is a desktop version of Evernote. It's still supposed to store to your desktop. Oh, I, don't, I don't know whether it does or not. I would imagine well, that's it what it, That's what it says in the description. Okay. I won't go out there then. So okay. by, uh, by saying there's a desktop version, then that means it'll store everything on your computer and not necessarily go to the cloud. The results will also be on your computer itself. That's correct. Yeah. And I have a folder and I don't, I'm, to get to it, I, I'm not sure I have to really root around and I don't want to do that right now. But I know I have, it's gigabytes of storage that I have right now with 16,000 notes. But uh, uh, most people aren't going to need that much space. Uh, I like to see Evernote store the Library of Congress. <laughs> um, just a thought, you know, just a thought. Okay, this still is the uh, Windows SIG. So if anybody, had, you know, we can open yeah. it up to questions other than Evernote. Uh, yep. We've got, a, we got about 12 minutes to, before we uh, yes, turn it yes. over uh, to Sharon and, uh, and talk about Linux. Yeah. So feel free, everyone, you know, raise your hand or if you have any Windows questions, this is a good time. We got a lot of talent in the audience. Steve Hall. Yeah, I like that. Everything that you mentioned is that a free app. Uh, yes. Easily available. OK. Yep. And, and, and free. if you look at and if you look in the chat box, I did put a link to where you can download it. Oh, very good. Thank you. It is a win. Worth a lot more than what you pay for, and I'll tell you that much. <laughs> no other questions. I guess you all know everything. <laughs> uh, I'd like to make I'd like to make a comment. Uh, Central sure. members, I will be sending out a link to the Google Forms for your evaluations. Please fill it out. The more evaluations we get, the better we can uh, we can pick speakers uh, for future meetings. Uh, okay, I'm I'm going to stop the recording and then start it again. And that way, we have two separate recordings. So hang on one second. Yeah, that's a good idea.